Bon matin, aujourd'hui, it's official. Vice buys Refinery29 for $400 million. I saw Sarah Dietschy and Hank Green baffled today at the fact that Refinery29 could be worth $400 million. Ah, Sarah Dietschy, last time I saw her, we were eating Thai food <laughs> in Hell's Kitchen. She just moved to New York after dropping out of school. Whoops. So, sorry if that was a secret, Sarah. And Adobe had given her a small stipend and she had moved to New York City. And we're both just winging it at the time. So I thought we'd, I'd speculate for a moment on why Vice is merging with Refiner29 and in doing so, maybe elucidate what this means. And I think the first observation to make is the fact that Vice Media did about $600 million in revenue last year. Their actual profit margin is, is nil, if not in the red. And in 2017, their revenue is roughly $600 million as well. So they've seen an increase of nothing over the last two years. And the second observation to make about Vice is that more than 50% of their audience is actually overseas. And as much as we all love our Pakistani viewers, assalamu alaikum, uh, the unfortunate <laughs> matter of events is they are not quite as wealthy as perhaps our American counterparts. And advertisers want wealthy demographics who can buy their products. That's where Refiner29 comes in. Vice is buying a very specific demographic. They're getting access to a demographic they do not have, which is the American female. And the American female, if properly galvanized and catered to, not, not, nothing negative, Refinery29 does this very effectively. This is why they have such a loyal audience. But if done correctly, you can get higher advertising spends on your content. So. In the most basic terms, a Vice video here and a Refinery29 video here, while this Vice video may have 2 million views and this Refinery29 video might only have 1 million views, people, let's say Procter & Gamble or Ford, is only willing to spend $50,000 to put their ad in front of this Vice video and they're willing to spend $250,000 to put their ad in front of this Refinery29 video. Why the difference? Why, even though Vice is getting more views, does Ford not want to spend their money advertising their new car? Because most of their audience in Bengal can't afford to buy the Ford. Or they're in China where it's, it gets hard to, the import taxes are just too high. But Refiner29, hey, this is a 27 year old female American. Maybe she's thinking about getting a new car. She just moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Perfect demographic, perfect targeting demographic. And this is a good way for, for Vice to one, get access to that demographic that they otherwise normally could no longer get access to. They have grown to a, such a scale, Vice Media has, that their audience is their audience. And moving a massive media company in a new direction is, is like trying to move a, <laughs> a great medieval stone castle. The thing is just not moving, it's staying where it was built. I think that pretty much well and good defines why Vice Media might be interested in buying Refiner29. But what about this valuation of $400 million? Well, $400 million is slightly misleading. It wasn't really a cash buyout, it was mainly stock. And if Vice is valued at five or $6 billion as a total company, in reality, they're acquiring what would be considered one sixth of, the, of their company. They're trading away one sixth of their company to get Refinery29. And as we talked about earlier, Refinery29 has an entirely different demographic and audience that Vice does not have access to. This doesn't seem like that bad of a trade. You trade away one sixth of your company to get access to an entirely new population. It's in some ways one evaluation of what Refiner29 was valued at the years previous. And indeed they were valued at $500 million last year. So in fact, the investors on the last round took a little bit of a hit. Whoops, it would have been a shame to invest in Refiner29 last year when they were valued at $500 million only to get sold to Vice for around $400 million. But then again, we think about this in the long term, the old saying, this planet isn't big enough for the two of us, is probably true. There was a plethora, uh, a biological spurt <laughs> of media companies, particularly digital media companies, in the early 2010s, but most of these can't survive and are already withering on the vine. It's the Darwinian survival of the most adaptive and adapt or die. Well, Vice is adapting by acquiring companies that have demographics they do not have. It makes total sense to me because Refiner29, ultimately, while it may appeal very well to their, their niche female American European audience, it cannot compete against the likes of 
Vice or Vox or BuzzFeed. And so it's a symbiotic merger. Refiner29 gets the protection of the larger media company Vice, and Vice gives its protection, making sure Refiner29 will continue to exist into the future, while also perhaps increasing Vice's bottom line, giving them access to that new female market that I talked about earlier. So, Sarah Dietschy and Hank Green, this is why Vice bought Refiner29. Will this prove to be a fruitful deal? In my honest opinion, probably, yes. The, the mergers were inevitable. There were too many digital media companies existing in 2019 and as we go into 2020 that, that mergers are inevitable. The VC money, the venture-backed capitalist money, and the kind of wild spending of the last decade has dried up as Facebook and Google have consolidated their, their hold on the distribution pipelines. And certain companies have grown to large scales like Vice and Vox, and others have, have withered like Attention or Mike and all those ancillary ones that we used to watch on Facebook but now are dying if not already dead. So this is my explanation as to why I spot Refiner29. If you found this interesting or insightful, click like or subscribe somewhere around here, even though I never embed the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you tomorrow.